Bible with you. <coughs> A couple of weeks back, I spoke from Psalm 118. Starts off, I give thanks unto the Lord for his good, because his mercy endures forever. And at the time I went, I'm sure there's other passages that use that exact same phrase. So we're going to have a look at a couple of those. Look at God's mercy, hence the songs about the mercy of the Lord. Come thou fount has reference to Calvary, mercy. So, just to highlight where they are, Psalm 106, verse 1, Praise ye the Lord, I give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy and ever. Then the next Psalm, 107, Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his endures ever. Then Psalm 118. Then go past to Psalm 36. I give thanks unto the Lord for he is good for his endures forever. Exactly the same as Psalm 1. Psalm 136 is the one which is what you could consider the chorus because at the end of each verse it says, for oh, his mercy endures forever. Mercy endures forever. Let's go back to Psalm 106. So it starts off the psalm by saying, give thanks for he is good and for his mercy forever. Then he goes through what you could term a litany throughout God the Father. I'm going to just highlight those things that Israel did for God to show mercy to them. So let's read the first five verses of the introduction. Psalm 106, 1 through 5. Praise ye the Lord, O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Who can utter the name of the Lord? Who can show forth his praise? Blessed are they that keep judgment, that does righteousness at all times. Remember me, O Lord, with the favour that thou bearest unto thy people. O visit me with thy salvation, that I may see the good of thy chosen, that I may rejoice in the gladness of thy nation, that I may glory with thine inheritance. So he starts off talking to the Lord, asking him, to help him remember his mercy and to see his mighty acts. Then he changes tack a little bit um, because he says in verse 6, we have sinned with our fathers. And uh, verse 7, our fathers understood not the wonders in Egypt. They remembered not. Um, so he starts off by saying, I will praise God and I will try to remember his mercies and his wonderful acts and not be like my forebears is what he's saying. So in verses 6 through 11, we see the Red Sea Rebellion. Um, so we see um, at the end of verse 7, uh, they provoked him at the sea, even at the Red Sea. So that's the first charge. Their misbehaviour that God had to show mercy for was they rebelled at the sea. Who remembers what happened at the Red Sea? Yeah, so they, they come out of Egypt, marching along through the desert, and next thing you know, they stop because there's this great big body of water in front of them. And they say, Moses, what do you think you're doing? Surely you just come out here to kill us. So they murmured and carried on. Um, but in verse 8, Nevertheless, he, that's God, saved them for his name's sake, that he might make his mighty power to be known. 
So despite their rebellion, he saved them. He instructed Moses to hold the staff and he blew the wind all night and then water parted over the night. And then he put a dark cloud between Israel and Egypt so that Egypt couldn't get through and he led them through the Red Sea. So he saved them. Then in verse 13 through 15, <laughs> I've coined this one, the meat mutiny. So in verse 13, um, they soon forgot his works. They waited not for his counsel, but lusted exceedingly in the wilderness and tempted God in the desert. And he gave them their request, but sent leanness unto their soul. I think that's a reference to when they said, we're sick of eating this manna, and where's all the leeks and the garlics and all the nice food they used to have in Egypt? Um, so God said, okay, I'll send doves. And that's when he sent the doves around the camp. So they woke up in the morning, there's a pile of dead birds all the way around. So they were able to go out and eat some meat. Um, but God judged them while they were eating it as well, and it was bitter in their tummy. And that's what that little passage is referring to. So the meat mutiny, give us meat, we don't want this manna anymore. Yet he gave them their request, but still judged them. So he showed mercy in that judgment. Uh, verses 16 through 18, we see the, what I've termed the ruler refusal. Um, so verse 16, they envied Moses also in the camp and Aaron, the saint of the Lord. The earth opened up and swallowed up Dathan and covered the company of Abiram. And a fire was kindled in their company. The flame burned up the wicked. So that's when those two guys there, Datham and Abiram, they said to Moses, you take on too much. Surely the other Levites can be leaders as well. Um, so um, God through Moses said, okay, let's do a test. In the morning, we'll have a test. But they refused. So God had to judge. So he, he says... Um, if you are right, it'll be okay. But if I'm right, God will do something totally unusual. And that's what happened. The earth opened up and swallowed them all. So um, we have the refusal to accept Moses as the ruler, but it wasn't the whole people that were judged. It was just those who rebelled. So he's showing mercy. Um, then we see the golden calf incident, which I've called the, the heifer heresy, because they made a, a, ha, a heifer, a, a calf. So in 19 through 23, they talk about, it talks about how they made a calf in Horeb and worshipped the molten image. Um, and then... In verse 23, we see God showing mercy... Uh, Therefore he, that's God, said he would destroy them had not Moses, his chosen, stood before him in the breach to turn away his wrath, lest he should destroy them. So they rebelled. They broke the very first commandment that God gave them about not making golden images and, and worshipping something other than God. And yet he showed mercy. He, he listened to Moses when he interceded. Um, and then in verse 24 through 27, we see their refusal to go into the land. So in, in 24, um, yea, they despised the pleasant land and they believed not his word. And so they refused to go in when God said it was time to go in. Um, and But then we see in verse 26, Therefore God lifted up his hand against them to overthrow them in the wilderness, to overthrow their seed also among the nations and to scatter them in all the land. So he didn't wipe them out there and then. He could have just said, right, that's enough. Let me wipe them all out and start all over again. But he showed mercy and gradually sent the government, the judgment. So the people who refused to go in died over the next 40 years during the wilderness wanderings. Um, then we see um, in verse 28 through 31, we see their waywardness in worship. 
because in 28 they joined themselves unto Baal Peor and ate the sacrifices of the dead. So I think this is reference to the prophet with the speaking mule, his name I can't remember now, Balaam, yes, he um, led them astray and showed the, the king of, I want to say Moab, of Midians, um, how to corrupt Israel. So they ended up worshipping idols with the people. Um, but we see in verse 30, then stood up Phineas and executed judgment, and so the plague was stayed. But God executed judgment, but then he stopped that judgment because of the intercession of Phineas. Um, then in 32 through 39, I think, 32 through 38, uh, we see just a list of other things that they provoked God with. So in verse 32, they angered God also at the waters of strife so that it went ill with Moses for their sake. So that's a reference to when they needed water and Moses, instead of speaking to the rock like God said, he struck it. And that's when Moses wasn't allowed to go into the promised land. Um, and then in verse 34, um, he said they didn't destroy the nations. So when they did get into the land, they still didn't do what God asked them to do. They did not destroy the nations, verse 35, but mingled among them and served their idols in 36. So we've seen these charges made against Israel, and yet God showed mercy. They rebelled at the Red Sea. There was a mutiny about not having the right kind of food. Uh, they refused to have Moses as their ruler. They made the golden calf. Um, they refused to go into the land that God had promised them was good. And then um, they joined other false religions. Um, so we see all these bad things that Israel did, and yet it, it starts off by saying um, we should give thanks because his mercy is endures forever. And that's why we can say it endures forever, because he was provoked so many times by Israel, yet he showed mercy. So we can see in 39 through 48, the little summary. Um, so we can see a, a little summary. that Thus they were defiled with their own works and went a-whoring with their own inventions. Therefore was the wrath of God kindled against his people, in so much that he abhorred his own inheritance. And he gave them into the hand of the heathen, and they that hated them ruled over them. The enemies also oppressed them, and they were brought into subjection unto, under their hand. So that's God's response. He did show judgment, but then 43, many times he did deliver them, but they provoked him with their counsel, and they, brought low, they were brought low for their iniquity. Nevertheless, he regarded their affliction when he heard their cry. He remembered for them his covenant and repented according to the multitude of his mercies. He made them also to be pitied of all those that carried them captives. So we see they provoked him, but he showed mercy. Um, he delivered them when they asked. Um, I think it's in Jeremiah, call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Come, let us reason together, God says. He's always ready to show mercy. Um, in verse 45, we see that he remembered his covenant. It was God who made the covenant with them, not Israel with God. God kept his covenant. Um, and 46, not only did he show mercy, he, he made the captors, those who took them captive, to have pity on them. So he showed great mercy. And then 47 through 48 should be our response when we consider all these things. Save us, O Lord God, and gather us from among the heathen to give thanks unto thy holy name and to triumph in thy praise. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting. And let all the people say, Amen. Praise ye the Lord. 
So we see God's mercy endures because he showed mercy to Israel when they rebelled. In Psalm 107, it has a slightly different emphasis. Um, Oh yeah, in verse 8, it shows you the emphasis. It says in verse 8, Oh, that man would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his, wonderful, and for his wonderful works to the children of men. So in verse 1, we see, Praise God for his mercy endures forever. In verse 8, he says we should praise God for his wonderful works to the children of men. So it's slightly different emphasis. And we can see in verse 8 through 14, that he satisfies and fills the hungry. So verse 9, he satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with goodness. And he goes on to describe how, how he looks after those who are in need. In verse 15 through 20, we see that he delivers from destruction. If we ask, he will answer. I notice though in verse 14, uh, sorry, verse 17, Fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities, are afflicted. Verse 19, Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saves them out of their distresses. So he saves us and even when it's our own fault. We're being foolish. In verse 21 through 30, we see that he answers prayer. Um, so it tells a story about those the seafaring guys in 23. They that go down to the sea in ships that do business in great waters, they see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. So they see his, the way he controls nature because they see the stormy wind come up and they see the waves go all the way up to the heaven and then all the way down to the depths, those big crazy waves out in the middle of the ocean. Um, in 27, we see they reel to and fro, staggering around like a, junk man, uh, like a drunk man. But 28, then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he brings them out of their distresses. So we can praise the Lord for his wonderful works. And then in 31 through uh, 42, we see that he controls nature for the benefit of his people. Uh, so 32, 33, it turns the rivers into a wilderness and the water springs into a dry ground. So that's going drought into drought. Um, but then um, in 35, he turns that wilderness into a standing water and he turns the dry ground into water springs. Um, so that the people have enough to make a habitation, they sow their fields, they plant their vineyards, and it yields fruit. Um, 38, he blesses them also, so that they are multiplied greatly, and suffers not the cattle to decrease. Um, 41, yet he sets the poor on high from affliction, he makes his families like a flock. The righteous shall see it and rejoice, and all iniquity shall stop her mouth. So God looks after his own people. So we can, we can praise God for his mercy because of his wondrous works. It satisfies the hungry. It delivers us from our destruction that's due us because of our own stu stupidity sometimes. He answers prayers when we're in trouble and he controls nature for the benefit of his own people. Um, and then 43 is the little summary again of how we should respond. Whoso is wise and will observe these things, even they shall understand the loving kindness of the Lord. So if you want to know more about God's loving kindness, we can observe how God does wondrous things for us. So I'll let you read Psalm 136 and skip out all the chorus bits. <laughs> I've, I've spent time writing it down and taking out bits so you get three phrases together. It makes it 
make a little bit more sense. So that talks about all the things that Israel's done wrong, but yet he showed mercy. So we should give praise to God for his, for his good and for his mercy. And we can see his mercy in the way that he treated Israel and in the way he treats us as well when we ask for help. That was all I wanted to share. Okay, any prayer requests?